everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, coming to you from Costa Rica this time. Today, I want to share a simple autofocus technique that I like to use with static wildlife in tricky low light situations or when it's hard to get a precise lock on the eye due to the structure of the animal's face. This tip will give you a better chance of some tack sharp eyeballs when your AF system begins to struggle. In fact, this is a technique I like to teach in my workshops here in Costa Rica and the participants find it really does make a difference. Also, please note that this technique is for achieving super exact focus and is geared more towards photographers who are like super picky about having absolutely perfect focus on the eye. Let's go ahead and talk low light and low contrast first. The thing is, we've all been there, facing a low contrast subject in dim light with our AF system begging for mercy as it struggles to lock on. In some cases, you get a nice sharp image, but some of the time you discover that despite what looked like a solid focus lock, the camera didn't quite achieve perfect focus. Now the dirty little secret is that the phase detection AF system in our cameras, it just isn't perfect. Although it's rare, in some low light and low contrast scenarios, the camera may give you an AF lock that's really a false positive. You hit the AF button, the camera focuses, it gives you a little confirmation dot, and by all indications, you have a perfect lock on your target. However, when you critically examine the final image, you discover that it was just a touch out of focus. If that's ever happened to you, and you know what, I bet it has, then this technique would have helped. This is especially true if the subject doesn't provide a lot of contrast to begin with, like maybe a black bear or a holler monkey, although it can easily apply to any subject, especially in low light, or if you have a slower lens, or maybe you have a slower lens as a result of adding a teleconverter. So, how can you tell if you're in a situation where you may not be getting the best focus lock? Well, there are a few clues. The first sign of trouble is when you can't seem to get an initial lock very easily. Maybe the camera hunts a few times before you kind of finally coax it into what seems to be sharp focus. When that happens, I'm always suspicious as to whether it actually achieved a perfectly precise lock on that eye. Now, the second clue that you may have a problem is that the AF may seem jittery as it tries to lock on or it continues to be jittery once it seems to be locked on if you're using like AFC slash continuous servo and have autofocus actively engaged. Now, a third clue is if it's seems to lose that lock easily, like you're locked on and for no reason the camera starts to hunt again. In short, if the camera seems to be having a hard time locking on or maintaining that lock, the final photo may not end up with focus exactly where you want it, on the eye in this case for wildlife. However, that's not the only time you may not get the best lock. Another very common scenario that comes to mind for wildlife photographers is when you have a subject with like deep set eyes, maybe a sloping face, or just tricky facial contours. When you are at close range, especially with very shallow depth of field, it's very easy to accidentally lock onto the edge of a face or part of that eyebrow there that is in front or behind the eye and miss critical focus on the eye itself. So whenever I'm in a situation where I'm not like 100% confident that I'm getting a perfectly precise AF lock, I'll use the technique I'm about to show you. In fact, sometimes I just use it kind of as a precautionary measure for good subjects as well, since many of us, including myself, tend to shoot a few extra shots anyway when we have a nice subject. So let's go ahead and take a look at the technique itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about exactly how to do this. I want to demonstrate this for you in the field here. Now, the thing is though, we have a couple preliminaries to talk about first, and the first one is your AF area. For this kind of work, you really should be on single point AF. Now, a lot of people think, well, you know, gee, shouldn't I be on a, you know, if I'm having a hard time getting it locked, should I try one of the other modes? But the thing is, the whole point of this particular tip is to show you how to get very, very precise focus on an eye in a difficult condition. And the problem is, is when you use those larger autofocus areas, sometimes they end up picking other areas on the subject and not the eye, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Even something like Nikon's dynamic modes, which have a primary AF point that's supposed to be the one that the camera uses, can sometimes go ahead and pick a different AF point in that array if that primary point doesn't get a confirmed lock. And that happens a lot when you're dealing with low light and low contrast. So my recommendation, stick with single point AF. Yeah. Next, let's talk about autofocus point position. Now, the way I normally shoot is that I compose my photo first, especially with a static subject, and then I move my autofocus point up to its eye, I focus and I shoot. In fact, I have a whole article about this and various techniques you can use to do this successfully at my website. I'll put a card for that above so you can go ahead and click that and check that out. 
But the point is, I like to go ahead and compose first, move my autofocus area to the eye, and then go ahead, focus, and shoot. Now, the thing is, though, we're talking about low light and low contrast here, so I kind of wanted to mention that if you try that technique, if you compose and then move your autofocus point, and you find that the camera is struggling to get a lock, what you want to do is go towards those center AF points, because they are generally a little more sensitive, and they handle low light and low contrast better than the outer points. Now, of course, if you're photographing something where the challenge isn't so much low light and low contrast, but maybe a deep set eye or something like that, then go ahead and compose and use those outer points. That works really well. Okay, now the technique itself is pretty simple. I'm gonna demonstrate it for you right now, finally, that we have the other stuff out of the way. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just first gonna find a subject out here to focus on. So I have a bird over here and I'm gonna go ahead and focus on him. And once I achieve sharp focus, inside my viewfinder, I see the little dot, the lens has stopped trying to focus. It seems like it should be sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to that point. And now I'm just gonna do a short burst, maybe three or four shots. That's it, I have my photos. Now, what I wanna do now, this is the trick, is I wanna just defocus it a little bit. I'm just gonna grab this ring and just turn it slightly. I don't wanna turn it too much because if I put it way out of focus, I risk the camera hunting again. And as a side note for especially Nikon shooters. If you're using an older AFD lens, you can't just grab this ring and twist it, you'll break the lens. And you'll be able to tell that because it won't move at all. But pretty much 95% of the Nikon shooters are never gonna have this problem. Any current Nikon lens, the G lens, the E lenses, any of those, any of the AFS lenses, you're gonna be able to grab this and just go ahead and turn it a little bit to defocus the lens. If you feel any resistance though, you are gonna to have to go down here, go into manual focus, and then turn it, and then go back to autofocus. But that aside, now that it's defocused, I'm just gonna go ahead and refocus right on my bird and shoot another short burst. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I just go ahead and defocus again refocus, fire, defocus with my finger off of the autofocus button. Then I refocus when I'm ready and shoot another short burst. And I'll do this two or three times, maybe four or five times, depending on how difficult a time the camera is having getting a lock on the subject. But that's really all there is to it. And every time you focus and refocus like that, what it does is it gives the camera an opportunity to maybe pick a little slightly different spot on that animal. So maybe during the first burst, maybe you didn't quite have it just on the eye, maybe it was a little in front or a little in back of the eye, and you took the burst, it's like the eye's sharp, but it's not like crystal clear. It's not perfectly tack sharp. The second burst though, when you did it again, you refocused and maybe it was the camera's fault, maybe it was your fault, maybe you didn't get it in there. I do that all the time. But the second time, maybe do a little better job or the camera does a little better job. And what happens is we have now a tack sharp eyeball. When I'm in a tricky situation, this often gives me one set that is super, super sharp. And sometimes they're all sharp, it just depends on the situation. But there's been more than a few times I've been out shooting in a tricky situation and I've used this exact technique. And maybe when I go back through Lightroom and I'm looking at the files, most of them are like relatively sharp, but there's usually a burst or two in there where I have the eye absolutely spot on and you can count every little eyelash, you can see all the reflections of the trees in it. So that's the basic technique. I highly recommend you give it a try. Finally, I want to emphasize that this technique isn't something that you should do for every subject every time. I probably use it like less than 5% of the time. However, when faced with a tricky situation, it can often be the difference between getting a perfectly focused eye and one that's just a touch out. Now, if you like this technique, you'll really love my Nikon autofocus book. It's hundreds of pages of tips, tricks, and techniques just like this. It's written and designed to help you get more consistently sharp images in any situation and it'll make focus problems a thing of the past. Definitely check it out. And finally, make sure you sign up for my free email newsletter and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure you hit that little bell button down there too if you want to be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.